Victoria Bryant State Park here in Georgia. You know, I've never been to this place, love it. First time, they have a golf course, they've got fishing ponds, they've got trails, and they've got some of the best covered uh, platform camping uh, that I've ever seen. It's like sleeping in a RV without having an RV. Um, they've got electricity, running water, even a light under the, uh, the uh, platform roof. So it's quite nice, but I'm about to hit the trails and uh, take it from there. I'm about to get on the trails. I've had two cups of coffee and I was going to do a little more about my camp setup, but um, I've got some kids that are camping next by and I'm talking about small, very small children and they are incredibly loud and it probably would have come over on the, on the recording. But uh, I'm not in the backcountry sections. I'm in the, uh, tent walk-in section off the RV section in uh, Victoria Bryant State Park. I love this park. I have never been here and I really regret never coming here in the past. Um, I'm kind of a mountain person and I like those mountain hikes. You've got some hills over here but it's nothing like up in the wilderness areas up in the North Georgia mountains. But uh, I will say this, uh, from watching the kids uh, next to me, uh, it's some young parents and they've got a child there, I think that's probably four years old. And then it goes up to maybe 10 or 11. There's four of them, four kids. But uh, if your kids aren't cold adapted uh, and used to being out in the cold for long periods of time, don't bring them camping for several days. The little kids especially, uh, if they're not adapted to the cold, uh, they get very ornery very quickly. And uh, these kids were crying and screaming and saying they were cold and everything else. And, you know, it makes it miserable for everybody, uh, especially the youngest one. She was just pitching a fit. But anyway, they're good kids. and. They started warming up next to the fire this morning, but I think mom and dad were miserable and they were the only ones camping with kids. So they were kind of anxious that they were making all the noise, but hey, it's all good. So there is a golf course here on this state park and the trails, as you can see, uh, wind around some of the golf cart paths. So um, you'll cross a lot of golf cart paths and then uh, you'll also see some beautiful cleared spaces and those are the golf course itself. It was just a little below freezing last night. I don't normally start off with a medium jacket on. I usually start off in a long sleeve polyester shirt or even a t-shirt, but I was a little chilly. I'm using the Solo stove, uh, the small one for um, my cooking takes it a while to get up to heat so I think 
the amount of time it took me to get the water boiling for coffee I just got a chill so I'm starting off with this on also I found out last night as I was removing my pants to go to sleep under my quilt down quilt that I lost the button in my pants <laughs> yes and I didn't know that until I reached for the button to undo it and it wasn't there so I have no idea where the button is so even if I had a needle and thread I couldn't put it back on if I wanted to I have no idea where the button is so anyway what's holding my pants up right now is my belt and uh, it's doing a good job so as long as my belt is holding up I'm gonna be okay How you doing? How you doing? This is a nice easy walking trail. It'd be a great trail to bring the family and do some day hiking. I believe they have almost six miles total trails. That's not a single trail. There's a lot of spurs and connection trails. But it'd be a great hike. And bring a lunch plenty to drink and gorgeous up here but nice smooth trails well maintained one of the best maintained parks I've ever seen in the state system here really nice I've got my sea to summit pack on and uh, very lightweight it's uh, waterproof Throw a couple liters of water in there, some peanut butter packets, and I'm off and running. I get about halfway, I'll have a peanut butter packet maybe. That Justin's peanut butter, I love it. I accidentally packed some of my wife's almond butter packets, which they also make. They make cashew butter packets as well. And uh, I'm not as big a fan of the almond as I am the peanut. But anyway, still, it fills you up, does the job. All right, crossing the street, I'm off of the perimeter trail. And there's a Broad River Loop Trail that hooks on to this path. And I'm going to take that one. This is a classic wetlands area. Beautiful. All kinds of wildlife in here. Okay, so now we have a loop of the loop trail. This is the Beaver Pond Overlook Trail. And um, we're heading there right now. And that is the beaver's pond. Right over there, you can see the dam. Water trickling over it. And it has backed up the river. Causing a larger wetlands area. Then on this side, the glare is pretty bad. You can see the other side of it.
or I came from this direction this way, there's a path that goes this way, that used to be the path. Then the beavers flooded this entire area and it took out a whole section of the path. So they had to create a new section. And uh, I ran into a woman who was a, a triple crowner. She's done um, all three of the major uh, through hikes and uh, she's an absolute sweetheart and uh, she lives five miles from here and she's adopted this park and she uh, cuts down all the small little trees and everything like that to grow on the path and picks up the trash and keeps it all in good shape so kudos to uh, all of you that volunteer in our local parks and uh, make them the special places that they are thank you It's about 10.30 in the morning and I got enough sunlight. It's warmed up enough that I shed that outer jacket. That was a Walls, W-A-L-L-S, outer garment, 100% polyester, quick dry, a little water resistant, and I love it. It's got that real tree pattern on it. If you wanna do some hunting in it, but it's got great pockets. I love all the pockets. Got this new shirt, it's got breast pockets in it, I'm keeping my map up here. And um, I'm going. So I've got a polyester undershirt, this uh, synthetic outer shirt, and I'm building up some body heat. I found this strange egg-like thing next to the path where the golf course is. It looks like it's about to hatch. I'll carry it out and see. All right, it's important. A little bit of trail etiquette. If you see some people coming up or you see you're approaching people, give a good morning or a good afternoon or a good evening or something like that in a nice friendly voice and wave as they see you coming because sometimes you'll scare the crap out of these people I've had it happen to me where I was actually on a trail and I was changing clothes I was getting out of my rain gear because the rain had stopped and I was in my underwear, my polyester t-shirt. And I'm pulling off the polyester t-shirt, which was wet from just sweating inside my rain gear. And as I bring the shirt over my head and look down the trail, there's a couple standing right there. And they literally did scare the crap out of me. But anyway, you know, just acknowledge that you see people, wave, be friendly. And, uh, causes a lot less tension on the trail that way. Lots of good eating on the trail. The animals aren't going hungry this fall. This is the fork 
in the Broad River. A lot of good rain lately. It's up quite a few feet. Water moving briskly. Good to see. Water's coming in hard during these heavy rains down this creek bed. And you can see that bridge abutment is gonna go. It's just an exposed piece of concrete. When that thing lets go, it's gonna be all over. And you can see where the screw is holding it together that uh, the wood is compromised as well. Hate to lose this bridge because you lose the path if you do. so many knobs on a tree before in all my life. All right, having a little peanut butter for lunch. I had to shed the long sleeve shirt. It's probably getting into the high 40s, low 50s now. And uh, I'm starting to sweat in that shirt, so I didn't want to sweat it up. Having some Justin's peanut butter. And remember, if you're on the trail, one thing I always do is I bring a sandwich bag that I put all my Justin's peanut butter in, and then you put the empty packet inside there and zip it up and it saves your uh, you're supposed to pack out all your trash anyway, but then it saves the inside of your pack from getting all nasty too. My uh, contact that I had with the woman who's the Triple Crown person walked all three major through hikes. Uh, and also helps maintain the paths here at Victoria Bryant State Park, said that these uh, tent spots are full just about continuously in the summer and in the spring and most of the time in the winter. So I guess if you're coming here, you better make a reservation early. And uh, I would highly suggest, um, I think it's six, seven, and eight or maybe it's you know it's five six seven and eight on the platform tent sites i would definitely go with those um i'm in number three and it's one through four um i don't like those as much they're too close to the rv section but um at five six seven and eight really nice so if you're going to platform camp that's the way to go they also have some backcountry sites i just couldn't get in one of them because I did this last minute.
health coverage for my family. I want better. And Broccoli better. and chili. Affordable coverage that fits me better. A reward program that really rewards me better. Yeah. And we'll put the coffee back on the pot. It's time for coffee. The solo stove is nice. It takes a little longer to boil some water. You gotta get the fire going. It's not a quick start, but if you've got time, and uh, you're worried about carrying a lot of fuel or you're going to be on a trip that's long enough where you won't have fuel. Um, solo stove works quite well. A lot of times what I'll do, I'm, since I'm so close to the car, I just brought my coffee pot for this camp. Normally I'll just carry my zebra pot. The solo stove fits inside the zebra pot and uh, I'll just be off to the races with it. But anyway, um, they've got a great loop trail that I walked yesterday, uh, perimeter loop of the park, and then it attaches to another loop that goes around this big beaver dam. Really nice scenery, uh, great tree canopy. Uh, the paths are in good shape, and I would say it's a fairly easy path. There are a few sections that ha might have some incline or decline to them, but overall, um, it's going to be a pretty easy path great place to bring your family a lot of families with a lot of kids showing up and um, I'm just really impressed by this park I actually too it's the first time I've taken a hot shower on a camp out in a long time but they had the showers there so I took advantage of them this morning it was uh, it was about 30 degrees when I woke up at 7 and uh, I said, what the heck? I'm, why am I sitting out here freezing trying to get my solo stove going and making a pot of coffee when I can just um, go take a really hot shower? And they did have hot water, so it was fantastic. I loved it. And it was a great way to start my day today. And uh, we're gonna hike. I'm gonna try to do about six to eight miles. I've got my Garmin E-Trex 30 with me and uh, so I'll be monitoring my mileage, and when I hit about, yeah, I don't know, somewhere around seven miles, I'll bring it back in. But good, good backpacking practice. I just love this remote camping area right next to the river. Just really, really nice. And they've got your little swing. You can just listen to the sound of the river and swing away. Thank you to the scouts from Troop 70 back in 1984 for making this trail. So incredibly sad, a remote trail and somebody dropped a McDonald's plastic cup on the side of the trail. You've got all this gorgeous woods, beautiful waters, 
babbling streams. And then you've got that. Incredible. Stupid people. They have some nice benches that they install all around the perimeter trail at least. And uh, nice place to have a snack or get back to rehydrating yourself. Um, I've seen about six people on the trail today. So this is a pretty active trail. More people means safer trail probably. But uh, anyway, enjoying myself. It's about almost 12 noon. And I'm halfway around the perimeter trail. I got a late start today, but I'm going to go check on the beaver dam loop again. See if I can see the otters or the beavers, either one. found the perfect lunch spot to have a little snack for lunch and some water. Beautiful little bench that somebody made and you just get to listen to the river flow down the stream there. Gorgeous spot for lunch. I love that peanut butter. Got a little honey mixed in with it. Great little lunch. Great view. There's a utility tree growing wild in the middle of the forest and it's got some vines hanging off of it. One of the few trails where you can get a coke product on the way. I'm going to call that one the stargazer's bench since it's pointing to the heavens. Hey, please, if you're going to come to the national parks, don't throw your trash out. If you want to be a pig, go visit the farm somewhere. 
Otherwise, we're tired of carrying your trash out. <laughs> I love these platform sites. They're quite nice. But as you can see, some of them are pretty close together as well. This would be a great one if you've got two families sharing the same one, they share the entrance. And then that's number four on its own over there. And the sites that I would recommend for this platform camping are sites four, six, seven, and eight. Four, six, seven, and eight. I'm in number three, but I'm awful close to number two, so I probably wouldn't recommend it, but, but look at this view. You know, you, you open your tent up in the morning, and, and this is what you see. I'll try to cover it. Just gorgeous out there. Incredible view. So anyway. Getting my last dinner of this trip ready, and uh, my one of my dehydrated meals I put in um, dehydrated hamburger, dehydrated peas. I think those are black-eyed peas, and then hot salsa leather. Which remember, you always put the sauces on top. Um, that way they won't stick to the bottom of the pot. So I'm gonna fill that up to the top right up here of the food with water. Let that sit for 10 to 20 minutes and I'll show you how it turns out. I've also got a little extra taco seasoning that I used for another meal the other day. I might actually even put some of that in there too. Got my solo stove heating up my meal in the zebra pot. And I'm gonna put the coffee on, put the rich dark chocolate, and I'm doing all right. This is a wood stove, twigs, so you never run out of fuel as long as you're in the woods. And here it is. Beautiful chili. I put hamburger, the peas in there. I mean, use peas in this. And uh, the hot salsa that I had leathered, put it all in there, and that is gonna be one steamy, hot, nice meal for a cold night. Now I gotta put a couple of logs, put a couple pieces of fire in the, in the uh, solo stove, get that going again. And then once I get that going again, Got my water boiling, and I'm going to add two of my favorites the treehouse mocha with organic coffee and two additional mountain hogan coffees, the freeze dried ones. And I transferred the hot coals from the solo stove to the fire and started the campfire for tonight. Got an incredible moon tonight on the last night. Cold, still air, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's see if you can see that moon up there. Up in the sky all by itself. 
just illuminating the trees and everything else. It's like a huge night light up in the sky. That's the last of the wood, last of the fire. It's almost nine o'clock and I'll be hitting the sack uh, when this burns out. But it's nice listening to the radio and just letting this burn out. The heat's coming off of it very nicely. All right, I just got up. It's uh, 8.40 in the morning. Uh, don't have, I do have some coffee that I could make. And I just might, I don't know. I'm thinking about heading to the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and there's always one all the way. But anyway, it's been a beautiful camp. Uh, time to break things down. The leaves are starting to change out here. This platform camping site was a great experience and a new experience for me. And uh, I'm definitely coming back with my wife because I think this is uh, really gonna work for her. It's the trifecta. You've got running water, electricity at the site, and you've got a golf course. So it can't get much better for her. Thanks, and uh, I hope you'll come see Victoria Bryant State Park. Really nice place, and uh, well worth the experience. The, uh, the, the camping on the platforms, it's not backcountry camping. It's not backpacking, which is what I like to do, but uh, it was a nice change. And being able to have a hot shower was pretty cool as well, especially on these really cold mornings when you wake up and it's 20 degrees. Thanks.